launch the new British monarchy <laughs> website. She's a monarch who's doing her best to keep pace with modern technology. And with a click, she invited the world to take a virtual tour of Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle. It's the second time that royal.gov.uk has been revamped since it first went online 12 years ago. None of this would be possible without the man who invented the World Wide Web. There are all kinds of archives and photographs and things inside this website. So a good site, website for me is something where if you're intrigued, you can then go in and discover more and more. The new site is described as more user-friendly. Now you can see if any royals are heading your way using Google Maps and access documents uploaded from the Royal Archives. It's a vast improvement on the last site. Uh, one of the most obvious changes is the design. We've lost that ghastly purple and pink colour scheme and it's a lot cleaner, fresher and there's a lot of nice new features on there as well. There's more video from present and past. You won't play, Phil. Well, you've come to the right place. I only wish we could just go out and buy you a field. I'm afraid it's not as easy as that. Naturally, her staff won't divulge how much time the Queen spends online or what website she views. It's been reported she emails her grandchildren but dictates the messages rather than type them herself. And though there is a form to send a message to Her Majesty, the palace admit that only a proper letter will guarantee a reply. And feedback is not encouraged. Viewers of the YouTube section aren't allowed to post any comments on what they think of the videos. Nearly 400,000 people took the official tour through the Buckingham Palace state rooms last year. Compare that to the quarter of a million people who visit the monarchy's website every single week. These improvements means that if you can't come here in person, the virtual tour can give you the next best thing. Ian Woods, Sky News, Buckingham Palace.